In 2 Kings, we have a famous story of a man named Naaman. 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 1, the Bible says this, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, notice what the Bible says, was a great man. This was a man that got a lot of respect. He was a great man. He, he, pe people, people saw him as a leader, notice, with his master. He was a great man with his master and honorable. He was respected. When he walked in the room, people stood. When he spoke, people listened. He was a respected, he was a great man, and he was an honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance into Syria. He was also a mighty man. He was a warrior. He was a soldier that had won battles and had freed his people, and he was also a mighty man in valor. The only problem was that he was a leper. Notice verse 1, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captives out of the land of Israel, a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were, the prophet, uh, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is up the land of Israel. And by the way, I'm not preaching on this, but it's interesting that this little maid is able to direct him to the man of God. Direct him to God. And this little unnamed maid was just a faithful witness, a faithful soul winner at work, just faithfully when the opportunity arose to say, hey, I, I know who can help you. Notice verse 5. And the king of Syria said, go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took him with ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel. I, I think I, I like this story. I think this is interesting. Verse 6. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. So the maid said, Hey, you need the prophet. He can heal you of your prophecy. The king says, I'll write a letter to the king. He sends it with Naaman. The king uh, opens the letter, and it says, I want you to recover him of his leprosy. And the king Verse 7, he reacts, he says, And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive? That this man to send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Whosoever consider, uh, or wh wheresoever consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh the call again. He said, You want me to heal this guy? You know, the king. And you know, it's interesting because often when we have a problem, we go to the wrong place for the answer. And, and, and he says, the, she said, go to the prophet. And they go to the king. And the king says, what am I supposed to do with this? How am I supposed to heal? I can't heal you. Are you just trying to pick a fight with me? You're trying to see that I can't heal him and, and, and have a quarrel against me? Notice verse 8. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, who they should have gone to to begin with, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, he sent to the king saying, wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me. And he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. He says, he was supposed to come to me to begin with. Look verse 10. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, I want you, don't, miss, don't miss what's going on here. I, I'm, I'm sorry, look at verse 9. So Naaman came. Now, don't, don't, don't miss this, right? Remember, this was a mighty man. This was a mighty war. This was a general. He was very respected, very honored, very, very uh, a great man. And the Bible says in verse 9, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot. I mean, just look, imagine that in your, in your mind. He comes with his whole, his whole entourage. I mean, they've got horses and they've got chariots, and you can tell that these people have money and they have power, and they are coming down to the house of Elisha and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Notice verse 10. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him. I want you to understand what's going on here. Elisha's sitting on a couch in his house. They look out the window. They see horses. They see chariots. They see Naaman, this great captain and great honorable man. And Elisha says, hey, servant, come over here. Tell him. Go talk to him. Elisha doesn't even get up. Elisha doesn't even go to the door. Elisha sends a servant. No, no, it's sent. And Elisha sent the messenger unto him, saying, Go wash in Jordan seven times, 
and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Imagine that. The door opens. We're here to see Elisha. He's busy. What's he doing? He's in a bubble bath. <laughs> but he sent me to tell you that if you just go wash in the, if you go wash in Jordan seven times, thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Now notice the response, verse 11. But Naaman was wroth. He was angry. He was mad. And went away and said, Behold, now don't, don't, don't miss this. You ought to underline this in your, in your Bible. He, he's mad and angry. And he says, Behold, I thought. Expectation. I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord is good and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Here's what he's saying. I had an expectation that he would come out and there'd be this great service and he'd get this great call. I, I thought that he would come. I mean, doesn't he know who I am? And you know what Naaman is experiencing? Unmet expectations. Unacknowledged, unappreciated. And he's mad. And he's angry. And he's upset. He says, well, I thought, I just thought that. And the funny thing is, that if you look, look at verse 11, but Naaman was wroth and went his way and said, behold, I thought he will surely come out to me. I feel unacknowledged and unappreciated. And stand and call in the name of the Lord and God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. He, he said, I, I had certain expectations that have not been met. Are not Abana and Farfar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him. You know, one thing I'll tell you about Naaman. He surrounded himself with some good people. Amen. And his servant came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he saith unto thee, wash and be clean. And by the way, this is a picture of salvation. Amen. Most, people, most people say, well, I'm, 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 there's going to be a great thing that I've got to accomplish. And don't I have to do some great thing in order to be cleansed? He says, no, just wash and be clean. Just, just wash yourself in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be fine. It's not hard. It's not difficult. We don't need a lot. We just need you to follow the instructions you've been given. Look at verse 14. Then when he down. And dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again, like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And here's what I want you to understand. Often, oftentimes we will be enraged, and oftentimes we will be upset, and oftentimes our hearts will grow hard when we have expectations. When we have expectations that have not been met. And when we feel unappreciated and unacknowledged. And here's the question I have for you. Where do those expectations come from? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. God says this, The only expectation you ought to have in life, if you're saved, is that I'll give you food, and I'll give you raiment. And anything you get on top of that, just count it a blessing. But we say, well, if I can't live in this neighborhood, and if I can't be married with this individual, and if I can't have this life, or if I can't have this career, if I can't have this ministry, and if I can't have this and this and this, then I will not be happy. Where did that come from? Where did God promise you that? Where did God give you that? We have unmet expectations, but they are expectations that we have placed on ourselves and our God. 